welcome to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center podcast. We hope that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a word from Pastor Jen Cobray. I'm going to get down on my knees and pray because I need God, but you need God too. Now look, 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 wait, let's, before we get any further, listen, I'm not asking you to get down on your knees, but I'm asking you to stand up and I'm asking you to do this for a reason. I want you to present your heart to the Lord. You know, we haven't come to hear from a man. When you go to church to hear from a man or a woman, you haven't come to church to hear from a tall man or black man, white man, short man. We haven't come to hear from a brown man. We haven't come to hear from a woman. We haven't come. We, that's just stupid. We have come to hear from the teacher of the church who is the Holy Spirit. And we want the Holy Spirit. What good is it if the Holy Spirit doesn't touch your heart? Like during worship, just for a moment or two, the Holy Spirit may have touched your heart. You know what I'm talking about. Well, you need to have that also with the Word of God. There's more of God. And that's why we say, Lord, here we are. Help me to stay focused. Help me to hear. Help me to respond in my heart. Help me to get this. Because I want to get this, God. And uh, I tell you what, it, it's going to change your life. This, let me give you an illustration. Tonight, we're talking about five easy steps for total freedom. You don't tell me you don't want that? I mean, that sounds like a television commercial. You know, five easy steps for total freedom. What is it you're not free about? What is it that's kept you in bondage? What is it that's keeping you from the blessings of God? We all have things like that. We're all doing stuff. We're all hiding stuff. God sees it all. If we just get free, we could be more than what God would have us to be. Five easy steps. And that's why you need to pay attention. Because listen, I can give you 50 steps. But I took just five of the things that I've known over the last 35, 40 years of being a senior pastor, and saw in the people that if they do these five things, total freedom comes to their future and to their lives. So it's not just the 50 things to do that you find in the Bible. You know, we can do prayer, we can do worship, we can do all those kinds of great things, and they're all important. Don't misunderstand. But these five things are so easy that I looked at it and said, oh my goodness, how many people remain in bondage to things that keeps them from the fullness of God and the blessings of the Lord. How many people, listen to this, call themselves Christians that are still activating their lives in sin and separates them from God? Even though they call themselves Christians. Some of you that are in here. And so here's the deal. Tonight is a really serious message about the word of the Lord that God wants you to get a hold of. And if your heart's not right, you won't get a hold of it. You'll think about lunch tomorrow. You'll think about what you got to do on Friday. You got to think about what you do this weekend. You know, think about how you're going to get there, get here, get there. Where I'm, how am I going to get the money to pay this? How am I, all that stuff. All your other thoughts come in. And you end up walking out of here and say, well, I did my penance before God. And you're never going to get anything from God if you think going to church is just going to get you some little brownie point with God. Get off of that. Where did you learn that? You might as well go out, which a lot of you do, into the fountain and throw your coins and make a wish out there, like we talked about before. It's like the stupidest thing in the world. It's time to break stupid superstitions and start to get to the reality of how it and what it's going to take for you to be successful in every area of your life. And the B-I-B-L-E tells us. That's simple, okay? So, yeah, I get down on my knees out of tradition and out of ritual. I want to impress you that I'm real spiritual too. But get past all of that and realize that we need to be our hearts before the Lord. And that's the real meaning of what we're doing. Stand to your feet and let's go before the Lord. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, giving you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. We thank you, Father, that we haven't come into the house of God to hear from a man or a woman 
We haven't come into the house of God to hear from an old man or a young man. We've come into the house of God to hear from your word that's taught by your teacher, the Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Touch us, heal us, strengthen us, encourage us, guide us, guard us, direct us, and we'll give you all the praise and all the glory as you bless our lives. How grateful we are. Grateful. Now, Lord, because you're going to bless us this day, we're not satisfied with just us. We're asking that you bless all the churches in the Inland Empire that meet, that are out there preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless our Baptist brothers and Lutherans and Methodists, Episcopalian, Charismatics, Pentecostals. Thank you for Calvary chapels and Harvest Oak Valley and Oasis. Thank you, Father, for the well, the way. that We thank you, God, for uh, Trinity, Emmanuel Baptist, Ecclesia Church. Lord, all of our churches that are out there that are doing something, we bless them as you would bless us. And God will give you the praise, give you the glory. At no time do we think of ourselves as better than them. We see ourselves as co-laborers, workers together in one field, building one kingdom, and not a man's, but yours. May all the praise and glory go to you with a great big shout. We're all in agreement. And we say what? Amen. Amen. Well, go ahead and have your seat. Five easy steps to total freedom. Total freedom in your life doesn't come because you sing a song. Good, but it doesn't. Total freedom doesn't come in your life, in areas of your life that are intimate and personal because you're cute. You might be. Or because you're educated, or because you're, you know, you're one of those people that are gifted. Total freedom doesn't come because, you know, uh, somebody gave you a break in life. You can be the wealthiest person on the planet, the smartest person on the planet, still fail at life, die, and end up in hell. And guess what? Your life meant nothing. You missed God completely. Wow. I find over the years that there's a lot of people that call themselves Christians that are in these amazing places of bondage in their life. The chains are still on even though they're Christians. They haven't gotten out. They still possess a lifestyle of bad habits. You know, bad habits could be anything. It could be smoking or drinking or anything that brings your quality of your life down to the place where you can't really receive the fullness of God, that's a bad habit. Let me say it again. Anything in your life that brings the quality of your life down so you're unable to receive the fullness of God is a bad habit. Some of those bad habits won't send you to hell, but they'll just ruin your life while you're here and ruin your witness while you're here. There's others that operate as Christians that love their sin so much that they have never made the decision and choices to get out of sin, just to stay in it and make excuses for it. And one of the things about sin that's so interesting, the Bible tells us that sin has its pleasure for its season. In other words, you can really learn to like it. It can become this familiar spirit that's just part of your life. And in the midst of the sin, whatever it might be, that sin will kill you eventually and take you to hell and keep you from heaven. And let me tell you something, that's far beyond a bad habit, but it's just horrible. And if I was any kind of a pastor at all that cared about you or the congregation here at the Rock Church World Outreach Center, I would really care about teaching you what I've learned over the years about how to deal with these issues of our life that sometimes are secret things that we keep back that hold us back from being either blessed by God or literally keep us back from being all that God would have us to be. And sometimes it even keeps us from heaven if we continue to go in the same direction that we've gone in. Again, the freedom that you and I may have, I don't care what it is. It could be eating bad, bad disorders and eating. It could be, uh, it could be anything from sexual sins that are out there that are defiling the body, that are keeping you back from being all that God would have you to be. And you like it, but you're making excuses over it. And, and you're keeping it in your life instead of dealing with it the way God would have you to deal with it, to get those things out of your life because it's ruining your life. 
And that's what we're going to talk about tonight is five simple, easy steps. Before we get into those steps, I want to take you to Hebrews. If you'll go with me, I know you know where the book is. We're going to a chapter in Hebrews. We won't be in for many years, chapter 12. So by the time we get there on Sunday mornings and Sabbath mornings, you will have forgotten what I said anyway. <laughs> Hebrews, the 12th chapter, I want to read to you the encouragement, in fact, if you will, the command that from God. This is the inspired word of the Lord, and listen to what it says in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse 1. Therefore we also, since... We are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. There's, there's a whole angelic cloud of witnesses watching who you are and what you're doing and with what you have. And let me say that again. That are watching who you are, what you're doing with what you have. That's what it's describing. Wow. And it makes this statement. Because they're watching and because they're witnesses of Jesus, it says, let us, it didn't say God will, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now, let me back you up through this verse. God is expecting you and God is expecting me to run a race and it's an endurance race. In other words, I start today and I keep running the race until my life ends. It's not a sprint. It's not something that I just get out there like on a track and go as fast as I can, as hard as I can for the short period of time and try to win and it's a short race. It's not a, a short race that you're in. You're in an endurance race. In other words, what you are today, listen, you cannot be tomorrow. You've got to be closer to God. You've got to be stronger with God and that's what this is all about. And it's an endurance race. And in order for you and I to run this endurance race, the Bible makes it very clear that we're going to have to lay aside something. In other words, God isn't going to come. Have you ever heard the people pray, say, God, please deliver me from this. I'm really into masturbation. I'm really into pornography. I'm really homosexual. I really have a problem. I really want to be changed, God. I really want that, but, uh, you know, I don't want to really give it up. And he says these words, uh, that, and then what happens is God doesn't respond to the prayer. You know, God help me, I really want this. And God is saying, hey, I have shown you how to do this. I've given you the power of the Holy Spirit. I've given you the directions of the word of God. I'm doing everything to help you get free except do it for you. And you got to do it because you notice the words that says, let us. Is anybody listening? Let us, in other words, the responsibility to set aside the weights and the sins. Now, weight, you can say like this. If you're carrying a weight running an endurance race, you're not going to run the endurance race very long. You're going to get tired. So those are bad habits that keep you away from things God. Bad habit, man. I sleep, love to sleep. I miss church every Sunday morning because I, I just can't, I can't get out of bed. Go to bed early. Teach your body how to do this. I'll show you how. So you can get up and go to church. Or at least go to the rock. They have a service all the time. <laughs> and so it says lay aside. So the responsibility for me to get rid of this weight, bad habit, is mine. And, and, and if I think it's God's and God doesn't respond, then I put the responsibility back on God. And I say, well, I prayed and he never did anything about it. So I guess he wants me to have it. And see, he's not saying that. The responsibility in order for you to run the race that is set before you, which is an endurance race, is that you're going to have to do two things. You and I are going to have to lay aside all of those bad habits and also notice the second thing, sins. Sins will keep you from heaven, keep you from God. And the responsibility of that is not mine. The responsibility is each and every one of us to do that. My responsibility as a Christian is not just to sing a song, go to church, and be brain dead about the responsibility that I have with God. Pray to God, ask him to set me free. And if he doesn't, I guess it's okay with him that I stay this way. Because guess what? You will want to stay that way because sin has its pleasure. 
and you'll make excuses why you're in the sin. Is anybody listening? And it's very important for us to see that we have the responsibility. Two things, lay aside the weight, lay aside the sin, and it's my responsibility. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. God would never tell me to do something I can't do. He's not sitting in heaven saying, hey, I want you to lay it aside, I want you to run that race, I want you to get rid of that sin, I want you to get rid of those bad habits. So you can be all that God would have you to be. Why? Because there's a race ahead of you, it's an endurance race, it's going to last a long time. And, and you're going to have to be sharp at the end as you are in the beginning, if not sharper. And, and I want you to run this race, and, and, but you can't do it, you stupid little humans. I'm just telling you that just to trick you. God doesn't do that. God never asks you to do something you can't do. So when I see something like that, then all of a sudden I have to figure out, well, God, how? Listen to this. How do I do this? And this is where the f- simple five steps. Simple, simple, simple. Easy. Five easy steps to total freedom. Are you ready? Yes. Number one, here it is. Want. Now, wait a minute. Want is wanting. Sometimes people just want because they want. You know, someone says, would you like a million dollars? Oh, yes, I really want a million dollars. <throat> but are you willing to want it enough to work for it? Are you willing enough to sacrifice for it? Are you willing enough to put your life into this? There is no one that has ever been successful that didn't start with the word want. I mean, Edison, I don't know, I don't, just, just off the top of my head, I mean, this guy is inventing the light bulb. And I, 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 I don't know the exact figures. He, he, he was asked, well, how many times did you fail? He says, I never fail. He says, I just learned 535 ways of how not to do it. Because he wanted it so bad, he never saw failure. He just only saw what he wanted. Now, let me tell you something about want. In order for you to break a bad habit or get out of some form of sin, whatever it might possibly be, you're going to have to want that more than you can imagine. You're going to have to want it as much as you want God itself, himself. Now, that's not, a, that's not a contrary statement because in order for you to get God in the fullness of God, you're going to have to get rid of mostly shed some of that stuff. So you can be all that God would have you to be. So you have to want it as, as passionate as you are about things of God. You ought to be as passionate about that as the things that you want. That delivers you from something that keeps you from God. Are you following? See, a lot of times we want something, but here's what we want. I want you to wave a little magic wand over my head and give it to me. I, I want it the easy way. If, it, if it's too hard, I want it. But you got to want it to the place where there's no excuses. you got to have it. You want, you want it so bad. Listen, when I want to lose weight, I lose weight. I throw all the food out. I get everything out of the way. I'm exercising. I just simply shut my mouth. If I want it that bad, I'll just shut my mouth. But when I find myself like I am right now, coasting along to a certain weight, and dealing with it and just buying bigger pants? Has anybody got fat pants, medium pants, skinny pants besides me? I won't throw the skinnies out because I've got hope for them. You know what I mean? But I, but I don't, I, you know what I'm talking about? But I don't want to do what I need to do to get into them. I tried getting into them the other day. I got one leg in the waist. What was that all about? you got to want this. I like what it says in Proverbs. There's this really cool little verse I found that God led me to in the 20th chapter of Proverbs. In fact, let's take a look at it together. Proverbs 20, which is just so neat. And you ought to circle it in your Bible because it really makes a statement about people. And I don't know, it just jumped out at the page for me. If I don't really want something, I'll make excuse about why I don't have it. I'll make excuses why I stay the way. I got to really want it. And it says, a lazy man will not plow because it's winter. See the word winter? I had it highlighted because some of your translations say the word cold, which is even better translation. A lazy man says, I won't work because it's too darn cold. There's always an excuse. But here's the problem with excuses. Watch this. He says, but he will beg during harvest and have nothing. In other words, you should have been plowing when it hurts to plow. 
when it's cold and when it's winter and when you can make an excuse, get up, get going, make something, make it happen. In other words, you got to really, if you want the harvest, you got to tolerate the cold. Are, are you following me? If you really want something, you're going to have to tolerate what it's going to take to get something. And most people that call themselves Christians are looking for God to just give it to them. Doesn't work that way. If you really want something, you're going to have to get in and tolerate life in all of its excuses to get what you want. There isn't one person ever been successful in this planet that even a non-Christian, non-Christian people that don't apply this principle, I want it so bad I will do whatever it takes to get it. Most Christians don't have that attitude. They say these words, well, I want it, but you know what, whatever. In order for you to break a bad habit, in order for you to get out of sin, you're going to have to want it. You can't make excuses about it. Some people come along and say, wait a minute, <clears throat> I'm into this sin because I'm born this way. Have you heard that? Have you heard that one? I'm not trying to pick on anybody. Here's the truth. I don't give a flip you're born that way. Go ahead and be born that way. The truth is we're all born sinners. And I agree, you probably were born that way. Doesn't mean you have to stay that way. <laughs> See, but you got to, wait a minute, it doesn't work if you use the excuse that it's winter, I won't plow. It doesn't work if you use the excuse, I, 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 it's too cold, I won't work. It doesn't work if you say, I think I'll listen to the world and the world says I'm born this way, I gotta live this way. Let me tell you something, you may be born that way because we're all born in sin, we all have a problem. We have a person on staff, I won't point him out to you, but guess what, he was born a heroin addict, born a heroin addict. Today, guess what? He doesn't have that problem. Why? Because when you want something, and you really want something, and you really want something, and you really want something, and you, you better get out of my way. I'm getting it. Listen, I don't know about you. You didn't get saved any other way because you just threw it up against the wall and whatever. Man, you got to really want this. Jesus said, you better be ready to pick up your cross and follow me. You better want Jesus and his cross and to follow him and salvation. All the stuff that goes with salvation in order for you to be saved. You got to want this. Is everybody listening? Second thing. We're talking about five easy steps. Second step is, I love this one, believe. You hang around men, you can believe men. Is that not true? Men, men always live in a world of doubt, and they'll always tell you, I know somebody who tried that, and it didn't work. They always live in a world of doubt. I mean, you, I don't care who you are, where you're at, if you're getting your advice for tomorrow from a man, you have a problem. Because a man will always give you carnal information that's full of everything except God. And I have to believe, if I'm going to believe, I got to believe that God's greater than my problem. God's greater than my shortcoming. God is stronger than my bad habit. God is greater and can change me whether I'm born this way or not. And see, that's what a lot of people come along when they hear somebody's testimony and say, well, man, I'm, you know, I'm just born this way. Okay, aren't we all born sinners? Do you really want to change? Then you're going to have to believe God more than what men say. Men say you can't change. Men say you're born this way. Men say you're stuck in this. Men say they've tried it. Men say they have adapted to it. Men say they gave it a try for a while, but it didn't work. You listen to them and you will fail. But if you listen to God, my Bible says, God says all things are possible to him that believes. In fact, you ought to listen to this. And Matthew, the 19th chapter, very important. Verse number 26, just pop it up in the overhead. It says, but Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men, this is impossible. Isn't life impossible when it comes to men? But why are you drawing your information and what are you believing? You believe in what the news tells you? You believe in what people say? 
Are you believing what God says? So let's know what it says. And then it says, but with God, some things, not, you know, your bad habit and sin really stops God. God can't get past your bad habit and sin. Well, listen, my Bible says, but with God, all things are possible. That means I can change. When people say I can't change, I can change. When people come to this church, they say, well, what do you think about this? I say, listen, we love you. But if you're willing to change, you'll be happy in this church. If you're not willing to change, because we're all being changed. Didn't the Bible make it very clear that we get changed? Doesn't it say that? Doesn't it say it in 1 Corinthians 5th chapter? We are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Have you ever noticed that when you got saved, you still had the same figure? Your hair still looked the same? You had the same shape? You say, wait a minute, what happened to all things becoming new? It's a spiritual understanding. As you apply the things of God, you change. Lay aside every weight. Lay aside every sin. You change. And people who don't change that call themselves Christians, number one, don't want. Number two, are believing something besides the word of God. Simple as that, and they don't want to admit it. Well, it was simple as that. Very important for us to see this, that we believe. We don't believe what men say. We believe what God says. We're talking about five easy steps to freedom. Here's number three. Watch this. This is the most important, resist. The Bible tells us that submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. you got to first submit to God, Second, you've got to resist him, and you'll flee. The problem with the word resist is we don't understand what it means in Christian. Can I talk to you about it just for a moment? Resist to most people means you stand and you put up a wall and you say, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to resist. I'm going to resist. And you know, we resist for a day or two or three, a week maybe if you're lucky, and then you're right back doing the same old problem you did before, and you know it. Resist incorporates the most interesting thing. It's called separation. You cannot properly godly resist until you separate from what you need to separate from in order to resist to bring in God. I'll give you an illustration. If I'm an alcoholic, I need to separate from all alcohol stuff. I don't work in a liquor store. I don't manage a bar. Is anybody listening? If I'm doing drugs, I don't hang around. I've got to separate from my drug friends. You following me? If I'm into pornography and I need to break this and I want it more than anything, my goodness sakes alive, I really want it. I'm believing God for a change, but I've got pictures of naked people all over the house and listening to it and watching it on video and going through the television and stopping on those filthy channels. Can I tell you something? Won't be long. You've got to separate from it. And resistance starts with separation. He says, come out from among them, be ye holy. What did he just say? Get away from the stuff you used to be in and get into, listen, if I'm, a, if I'm a person that needs, I've got a bad habit in something and I continue the bad habit or hang around people that encourage the bad habit, won't be long before I'm bad in the, back in the bad habit. Listen, if I'm on a diet, I cannot have ice cream in my refrigerator. It calls to me. Does anybody ever sit there and watch the television and say, oh man, Rocky Road, I know what's in there. <laughs> I got to separate. I, got, I have a wife who likes that stuff. She'll always have a little nibble around. I can't nibble, man. I'm I'm, a, I'm a eat everything. I love apple pie. The other day she, I went to the store. I bought myself an apple pie. She didn't eat any of it. She doesn't like apple pie. I thought, this is great because I get it all. That is not separation. <laughs> and we do that on every level. You know, if we're, if we're uh, 
homosexual, we do it on the state. We hang around our homosexual friends. We don't separate. If we're into masturbation, we, we hang around stuff we shouldn't be looking at and doing. If we're into drugs or we're into alcohol or into whatever it might possibly, whatever bad habit, whatever sin that's keeping you from the things of God, if you stay in it, you will activate yourself in it. Won't be very long because the Bible says, cast down imaginations that exalt themselves above the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So therefore, if I'm casting down imaginations, how can I cast down imaginations when I'm living in it until I resist it by separation? Resisting by separation is mandatory for you to break a bad habit. Very important for us to take a look at. In fact, look at this in Romans, the sixth chapter. It just popped up, verse 13. Listen to what he says to us in verse 13, the sixth chapter of Romans. He says, do you not present your uh, members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin? Do not. That means I don't have to. And then he comes along and says, but present yourself to God as uh, being alive from the dead and, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Well, that means I can present, I can live my life as a righteous person. You see, a lot of people don't understand that. You will never do it if you don't resist. And resist means separation. You cannot hang around the same. Let me tell you something. If you're a hooker, you do not walk the streets at night. Are you following me? Verse number 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. In other words, wow, I don't have to let it run and control me. For you are not under the law, but under the grace of God, or under grace, verse 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Heck no! Watch this, verse 17, 16. Do you not know that whom you present yourself slaves to obey? Listen, if you hang around something, you are not properly resisting it. Some, some a husband comes, does counseling with me, and, and he's always out having a beer with the boys afterwards. Before he comes home, they get off work, go have a beer together. It's all the guys. Sometimes he'll have two or three. Comes home, you know that. It happens all the time. They sit there and have two or three. What do you think they're doing? They're talking about dirty stuff. They're talking about women. They're having a beer. The resistance is being down. Without the separation, there'll never be the righteousness. Listen, then you end up yielding your body to instruments of unrighteousness instead of righteousness. Slaves to obey. And all of a sudden you say, well, I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, you didn't do anything wise either. See, it's not about doing stuff wrong. It's about doing what's right, wise. And all of a sudden he comes along and says, you are the ones who slave whom you obey, whether it's leading to sin that leads to death or obedience leading to righteousness, your call. It's just what he said, your call. Not, not the devil's call, not your friend's call, not anything else. Some of you need to change your friends if you're going to make it as a Christian. Some of you need to change your relatives. Hello. I know your blood, but I ain't hanging around you, sucker. You know what I'm talking about. God, I used to get together with the relatives because they were relatives. Everything was a go. Well, you know, they're relatives. I'd like to know what one of them ever did for me. Except take all my money in a poker game. get me drunk while I was doing it. It's all their fault, you know, not mine. <laughs> Come on, let's be wise. Very important for us. Listen to what the Word of God has to say. Listen to this. Uh, Second Peter, I like this one. Third chapter, verse 17. It says, Ye therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, now you know something before. Watch this. Beware. At least you also fall from your steadfastness. At least you all, in other words, I can be so steadfast going on with God. What happened? I wasn't aware. I let things in. Started hanging around again. Started talking again. Let me tell you something. If you have a sexual problem, 
You're going to have to separate from it. Let me tell you how serious it is. Jesus says this. If your eye offends you, because <laughs> it's better that you go to heaven with one eye. <laughs> Papa. Yeah. Then to, then to get to heaven with two eyes and get rejected from heaven. If your hand offends you and keeps you from heaven, it's better that you do what? Uh, is that a serious thing? Are you, are you following me? Now, I'm not telling you to pluck your, I go home and I, I'm telling, tell, tell the Sun newspaper my pastor said I'm cutting out the eye. He's just telling you how serious it is that you're going to go to hell if you don't separate. So get away from that stuff. Get around people that help encourage you. Get into a place of faith all the time where you can be encouraged in the ways of God and resist the devil and he will what? Flee. But there's a right way of resisting. Which brings us to number four. You're going to have to continue. In other words, this is not something you do and win one time and stop. You continue for the rest of your life resisting. You continue for the rest of your life believing. You continue for the rest of your life uh, wanting with a passion. You know why? Because it'll let you alone for a while then creep back in and try to get you down the road when you're not looking or expecting it. Are you following me? Has everybody done that? You, you finally got free. You feel pretty good. And you let your guard down. Bang! Here it comes again. And you have to continue. You have to be steadfast. You have to keep on keeping on through the rest of your life. Yeah. I mean, if I had issues. I'm not telling you what they are. It's my business, not yours. God spoke to me one time and said, okay. Are you going to do that? Or are you going to have me make a choice? I said, God, what are you talking about? Make a choice. Tonight, some of you are in that road of choice right now. You're going to have to resist and you're going to have to continue. And all of these years later, I won't let anything of that expression come in. Fifty years later, my God, I'm still fighting that fight. I'm not fighting the fight, I'm just won't let myself to fight the fight. I don't even think about it. I cast down imaginations before they become something that I'm thinking about. Is anybody listening? Yeah. Continue is very, very important. In Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 13, just pop it up, verse four. It says this, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, I should have highlighted the word stand there, Verse 14 comes along and says, Stand, therefore, having been girded with your waist with truth and so on. Stand, keep standing, keep standing, keep standing, keep standing. Last, last simple, I'm talking about easy. I'm talking about easy. Here's easy. Here's the easiest, easiest of them all. Speak. So if I don't speak over the problem, then I'm not affirming to myself what God says about my victory. And I need to speak it all the time. I'm more than a conqueror. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Uh, nothing is impossible to God. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the head, I'm not the tail. I'm up, I'm not down, I'm, a, I'm not a loser. I've got the victory of Christ on the inside of me. I'm healed by the stripes of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen, if this can take care of your healing, it can take care of your social problems too. And I have to speak it all the time. In order for me to make business decisions, sometimes business decisions are scary. Anybody ever been there? Especially when you get older, my goodness. It's like, like if you lose this, where are you going? Who are you going to live with? I ain't living with Dan and Jess. They drive me nuts. <laughs> Luke and Stacy, you got to be kidding me. They all have too many kids to move in with. They got 12 grandkids. I'm not moving in with all of them. So it can get scary. I have to make a statement over myself all the time. Did you know this? I say it over myself every day. God, you haven't given me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. 
God, you haven't given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. I've got the mind of Christ. And I, I'm not bending my knee to fear, nor am I making decisions based on fear. I've got back, in, back by you. Therefore, God, I just speak to this mountain. Be thou removed, be thou cast on the sea. And God, I want you to know something. I am saying it out loud. Now, listen to what Mark, and you've, this is a famous verse for everybody knows this, but just check it out for yourself. Mark, the 11th chapter, verse number 23, says these words. For assuredly, I say unto you, whosoever says, listen, say to you, says, to this mountain, be removed and be cast in the sea. What mountains have you got that are keeping you from God? Come on, be honest with yourself. What mountains, what issues, what hang-ups, what bad habits and what sins? Speak to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea. Then it goes on, and the next part of the verse says this, and does not doubt in his heart. Can I tell you something? There's the believing. First, there's the wanting right there, and then there's the believing right there, and then there's the resistance, but believes that those things which he says will be done, didn't say instantaneously, I've got to resist and keep on continuing resisting. Watch this. And it shall have whatsoever he says. You got to speak this stuff. You can't just pray one time and, oh, it's over with. I'm free. I have yet to see that happen in the church. Well, let's have prayer meeting and all lay hands. You're free. You don't, yeah, you might be free, but now you have to do something to be about your freedom. And you're going to have to do these five things in order to stay free. Number one, you're going to have to really want it. Number two, you're going to have to really believe God, not what men say. Yes, men always have an excuse, it's too gold to plow the field and have no harvest. Too cold. Yes, men got an answer for everything, don't they? Three, you're going to not only believe, but you're going to have to resist, resist with godly separation. Very important. Number four, very important that you continue at this. Continue and continue, endure, endure, and continue and continue. Don't do it once, you just keep on doing it. Listen to this. And number five, start speaking it over you. Start saying what God says about how you can do things and accomplish things and be something. Don't listen to what man says because you, number two, believe God. And guess what? I promise you as a pastor, your life will be changed. And those things that have held you back from the blessings will be gone. The bad habits will be gone. Life will change. And may I say this to you? Sin will have to go in the name of Jesus and you're free to receive the blessings of the Lord. Or, here's your option. Here's your option. It's too cold. I'm not going to plow. Your call. Your choice. But this is not God say all things are possible to him that believes. Come on. Is there anything you can't accomplish with God? If God spoke to you today, come on, give him a great big praise to the Lord. Will you do that? My. Before you leave, let's get right with God. There's a bunch of you right now that are going to die, go to hell. If you die, you're going to go to hell. Okay, let's dismiss and let you go to hell. Wouldn't that be horrible? Let's get right with God. You know who you are. You've been screwing around with God long enough. You've been half in, half out. It's time to get all the way in. It's time to give him all of your heart. Give him all of your life. The word is being born again. And that's what it means. You gotta give God, oh, hear me, hear me. All of your heart, you gotta give him all of your life. You know why? Because he's not gonna steal it from you. He's not a crook. It's your heart and your life. He's not a manipulator to make you do this. You know, he could hit you in the head with a two by four until you finally give in, but he doesn't do that. He gives you a free will choice. And you can sit there and say, I know who God is, but that won't get you to heaven. You can celebrate Christmas every year of your life, but that won't get you to heaven. You can celebrate Easter every year of your life, that won't get you to heaven. And just knowing, like I said, who Jesus is doesn't make you a Christian. Even the devil knows who Jesus is and he's not going to heaven. 
The only way to get to heaven is God's way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No man goes to the Father except by me. You can't get there your way or my way or some well-meaning church committee's way. You're going to have to get there God's way. And Jesus makes it very clear how to get there. You must be born again, John 3rd chapter. You must be born again. That means from the beginning of the Bible, the end of the Bible, here's what born again means. It means you've given God all of your heart. It means you've given God all of your life. Didn't say anything about mental assent, mental acknowledgement about who he is that does not make you a Christian. It's about your heart, giving him all of your heart, giving him all of your life. It's an all or nothing relationship with Jesus Christ. Always has been, always will be. I'll prove it to you, last book in the Bible, book of Revelation. Jesus speaking, he says, I'm coming again, and when I come, I better find you hot, or I better find you cold, because if I find you lukewarm, I'll vomit you from my mouth, Jesus says. I'll vomit you from my mouth. Wow, what a crude, rude statement out of the mouth of Jesus. I'll vomit you from my mouth. That's like a bizarre statement. Who's he vomiting out of his mouth? People that are lukewarm. What's lukewarm? Little in, little out. What's lukewarm? Little up, little down. What's lukewarm? You know, occasional church attendance. God is something, but he's not everything. That's lukewarm. If that's you, listen closely. You know, here's lukewarm. You're not against God. You no, know, no, no, no. You're not against God, but you're not wholehearted for God. That's lukewarm. And today, you can change that by giving God all of your heart, giving God all of your life. There's 15 of you in here right now. There might be even more than that, but there's at least 15 of you for a fact if need to get up, get your stuff, get out of your seat and meet me right here in front. Nobody moves, nobody claps except you 15. If that's you that I'm telling, that you say, Pastor, I can't do that, man. I'll be a spectacle. I'll be embarrassed. Yep, Jesus walked through the streets, a beaten, bloody mess for you. Man, they knocked the snot out of him. The Son of God, they spit at him and they called him names. And let me tell you something, he did that humiliated for you. You can in a safe church get out of your seat, get in the aisle, and meet me right here in front. You know you need to give God all of your heart, and you know you need to give God all of your life. Now, I'm not going to do this all night long. I'm just going to give you an opportunity. You can sit there and do nothing. Well, you know, it's too cold. I guess, guess what? It's winter. You'll never have a harvest. Or you can start doing what you know to do, even though it's uncomfortable, and get a harvest at the end. Who are you? Who's number one? It'll get out of your seat and get up here right now. Thank you. Now there's 14 of you. Thirteen of you. I'm trying to make sure all your SPTs stay put. I don't want to see you guys right now. Thirteen of you. Come on up. Just stand right here. Thirteen, twelve. Come on. Come on, if that's you. Is there two of you back there coming? 12, there's uh, 11 and 10. There's 10 of you now. You need to get out of your seat and come. I know there's a bunch of you on this side. Just need to come. Just not gonna mess with God. No, I'm not messing with you. I'm not blowing smoke and incense all over you. Can you tell by the way I'm dressed? I don't give a flip. I'm not here to show off some ecclesiastical robe. Get out of your seat, get up here right now. I'm telling you the truth. And you need to come. Whether you come or don't come isn't the issue for me. I'm just doing my job right now. But the issue for you is you better come when you know you need to. There's 10 more of you that need to get out of your seat and come right now. 10 more of you. Come on, get your coat, purse, sweater, Bible, friend, get your stuff. And you come. Ten more of you. Today is your day of salvation. There's nine more. There's eight more. You're going to miss this. And you know it's you. Come on. There's eight more of you. Come on.
Why is it you can trust me with the word of God, but you can't trust me by telling you the truth about your salvation right now? Is it you that's in the way? Get yourself out of the way and do what God would have you to do. You need to get out of the way and let God have his way. There's eight of you that need to come. Come on. Didn't embarrass them, I won't embarrass you. Now there's seven of you. And now there's six of you. It's okay. There's six of you. There's five of you. Five of you. From the family rooms, you can get your children and come. You don't have to. I don't know where you're at, wherever you five are. I have no idea. So if I'm looking at you, I'm, I, you know, I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. I have no idea who you are or where you're at. I just know by the Spirit there's five more of you that need to come. And I don't have much time, so I'm going to tell you that if you don't come, you're going to miss out, and it's your fault. I've done my job, not mine. Oh, you know that's you. You know it is. You're just messing with God right now. Because he's tugging on you and you're just resisting that. Four more, three more, two more, one more. Oh yeah, that's you, uh-huh, you almost missed it. That a girl though, God bless you. She just jumped out of her seat, good for her. What do you say, let's give the Lord a great big praise. Now look, thank God you guys have come. Thank God, thank God, thank God you've come. Now look, here's what I want to do. I want to point you to this guy over here. His name is Pastor Joel. Pastor Joel is a really good guy, no weird stuff. Now you SPTs can come up here. Uh, uh, no weird stuff goes on, I promise. He'll pray with you, give you some free stuff to take home. Kind of cool, you know. People you came with, they'll wait for you. Is that okay? And he'll tell you about a program we have that'll help you get strong. Only takes a few moments. We'll keep you just for a few moments let you go. No embarrassing stuff. You just did the most embarrassing stuff in the whole world, and you just did that. Now... You are planted with the things of God. We welcome you home. We love you. You ought to make this your church. We're fighting for you. So it's great. So everybody make a left turn. Follow Pastor Joel right over this way. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise. Come on, you can stand and give the Lord a great big shout. Hey, you just heard that altar call. You just wanted to give God all of your heart and all of your life. Now let me lead you simply in a prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and listen to me and go ahead and close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. I'll go slow. You repeat them. Say these words. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son and that you sent him for me and that he died for me on that cross at Calvary. I believe that his blood washes away my sins, that I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. I receive you now and forever as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm going to turn from sin and I'm going to turn with all of my heart and all of my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. 
Let it be known in heaven as well as upon the earth that I am born again. I'm a child of God, that I'm saved, and I'm headed for heaven and denying my presence in hell. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive forevermore. Love you so much. God bless you guys. Everybody just say amen and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So talk to you later. God bless you. Bye-bye.